Okay, so it turns out that Quake 2 was like a major gaming blind spot for me. And it's not that I never played the original Quake. I did, on N64 and PC, and I loved it on both. But I don't know, for some reason I just kind of missed Quake 2. I think for me the reasoning was that Doom 2 felt like a lot more of Doom 1, and Spirit of Destiny felt like more Wolfenstein 3D. So I just kind of assumed that Quake 2 would be more of Quake. And it uh, turns out I was wrong. Like, really, really f***ing wrong. Also, my family didn't really upgrade PCs until around 1999-2000, so when I jumped back into FPSs on PC, it was more like Unreal Tournament and Half-Life. So when I fired up Xbox Game Pass one day about a month ago and saw that Quake 2 was available to just download and play, it was time. Sure, I may be more than 20 years late to the party on this one, but better late than never. It's time to finally take a deeper look and see what I've been missing. That said, let's go! Sister teams. So as I mentioned before, this game is a remaster of the 1997 original Quake 2, now in glorious 4K and 60 frames per second. Or 120 frames per second if your machine has the juice. The story itself of Quake 2 follows a completely different storyline from the original. This time you're facing a complete alien invasion from an army called the Strog. We learn through an opening cutscene that the Strog have pretty much up most of Earth at this point, and it's time for some actual offensive action. You play as a space marine named Bitterman, who survives the initial attack on the Strog planet through mostly s**t's luck. But with the mission still being the mission, Bitterman decides to take the fight to the Strog as a one-man army. Of course, probably the most screwed up thing about this entire story is the fact that most of the enemies you fight in the game are actually the soldiers you came to fight with, only they've been captured now and turned into these horrific monstrosities that are basically just programmed to kill. And by kill, I mean kill you. So you'll be fighting your way across 10 levels against everything from zombies, brutes, mutant fish, dudes in jetpacks, to whatever the f*** this thing's supposed to be. Oh, a gladiator. Neat. And every moment of it is a good time. And that's not even including the expansions, which eventually just start throwing comical amounts of enemies at you. Ah, that's just so cathartic. It's like playing Power Wash Simulator. Co-developers Night Dive Studios and Machine Games are spoiling us with this release. I came into this video certain that I could do an adequate job of covering all of the visual updates in the new remaster. That was, of course, before my ass was completely humbled after watching Digital Foundry's video on all of the new visual upgrades. If you haven't seen it, trust me, you will feel spoiled with the amount of information and love on display over there for Quake 2. Although if I were to try and sum it all up, the presentation gives us something that keeps all of the best parts of a late 90s FPS, but adds in some modern polish and other sensibilities that really make this feel like a game that belongs in either era. The Quake 2 remaster comes as a package. We get the original campaign, as well as the expansions Ground Zero and The Reckoning. We're even treated to updated cutscenes that stay pretty faithful to the originals. Well, at least as far as the videos I've looked up online have shown me anyway. As of making this video, I've already cleared the campaign, and I'm about halfway through the Ground Zero expansion. I will most definitely be coming back to finish the others. But of course, I can't move on without mentioning the other two additions to this package. First, there's the brand new expansion made especially for this release, Call of the Machine. If you're wondering what the new expansion is like, think of what it would look like if a passionate fan modder had a chance to make an official level and you might get an idea of what to expect. It's broken into individual levels that you can access by choice through a main hub world. You'll send different marines on single missions to weaken the Strog's defenses. Each level is a lot longer than the average campaign level, and it's well designed enough to never feel boring or unfun. But the real selling point on this new expansion is the hilarious number of enemies they throw at you at a single time. I'm not sure the original PC version could have handled that kind of enemy load, but playing this one on the One X, the only one getting overwhelmed was me. As it should be. Oh, right, there was a number two. It's Quake 264. They gave Quake 264 
for the same remaster treatment as everything else. And it plays just as great as everything else too. I still can't believe they included it. I remember Quake 1 Remaster having a Quake 164 port included, but it wasn't anything close to this. Quake fans are eating good on this one. I also appreciated how much detail went into the stage designs. Seeing how the Strog do their recruiting up close is some bone-chilling stuff, even in low poly. Although it's pretty easy to forget the horrors that surround you when the gameplay is this fun. Damn, this game is smooth. Everything from the shooting to the movement and the level pacing just feels right. They even got the platforming and underwater sections right. That is not an easy thing to do. But of course, the core of any good FPS lies in how fun the weapons are to use. And the answer is... <laughs> the game starts you off with a basic weak blaster with unlimited ammo, but quickly starts giving you weapons ranging from the shotgun to the super shotgun. Also, the machine gun, chain gun, rail gun, grenades, grenade launcher, rocket launcher, hyper blaster, and the BFG. And we even get more weapons in the expansions. Each weapon has their own advantages and disadvantages. Also, the inclusion of the weapon wheel for quick weapon swapping makes switching more fun than I imagine it would have been on the original release. They can have various effects on the different enemies you encounter throughout the game, but the effects kind of boil down to a shrug, a knee, Exploding on impact, dying slowly while cursing your name, something much less dignified. It's funny because one of the biggest things I remember from the original Quake was a lack of weapon variety. Quake 2 does not suffer from this issue. Another thing I love about this game is the weapon wheel. We also had it in the Quake 1 remaster, but it's great to see it return here with a second wheel for extra items and power-ups. On Xbox, it was just a simple press and hold of either the left or right bumper mid-combat to bring up either wheel. It also slows down the gameplay enough to let you make a selection mid-battle without getting shot too much. The power-ups on the left wheel range from things like a breather for swimming underwater to everybody's favorite, quad damage. And of course, you'll get all the openly placed med kits, ammo boxes, and floating power-ups one would come to expect from a game released before the original Half-Life. On top of all that, Quake 2's quick save feature is an absolute godsend. On Xbox, it was just a simple press of the right bumper after bringing up the pause menu. Same for quick load with the press of the left bumper. It's an incredibly useful feature for people looking to avoid too much backtracking. Just remember to do a hard save every once in a while, otherwise you might lose a full three stages of progress in Call of the Machine. Like I did. You'd think all of this carnage would get more repetitive over time, but the music and sound design go a long way to help with that. I absolutely love this game's soundtrack. It's not quite as grand in scope as something like 2016 Doom, but I don't think it needed to be. Of course I had to look up the original soundtrack for comparison, but everything in the remaster seems to keep pretty faithful to the source. There's an upbeat tempo to everything that adds a high level of energy and urgency. When there's supposed to be a quieter moment, the game will let you know it, both through the music and the effects. So if you think a room is safe, but you hear one of these, you'll know there's still work to be done. It's also great how every enemy voice and weapon has its own distinct sound effect. When you hear an enemy call out or open fire on you, you quickly learn which one just by ear. It's a smaller touch, but one I felt did a lot to draw me into the game and its atmosphere. Even the weapons you use will each have their own distinct sounds and they all felt satisfying to hear in repetition. That super shotgun cycle of boom, click, reload never felt old, no matter how many shells I fired off. The sound of enemies constantly crying out in agony or flat out exploding in the digitized chunks may not be for everyone, but realistically, I don't think anyone with those handguns would be picking this up in the first place. Personally, the lizard part of my brain loved that <laughs> Either way, nothing about the sound design in this game ever wore thin on me. Not even all the grunts. <laughs> Now 
When I used to hear about how amazing the old Quake engine was, I always assumed people were talking about things like the multiplayer or the map editor. Even looking past all of the new updates, I can absolutely see what would have made this game special, even back in 1997. There's still a ton of expansion content that I need to try more of. I'm coming for you, Quake 264. And I still haven't even touched the multiplayer. But with the amount of fun I've been having with the Quake 2 remaster, I think I'll still be playing this one long enough to get to check it all out. The game is out for just about everything right now. PS4, PS5, Series S, X, PC, and even the Switch. Seriously, I am still amazed that this game has flown under my radar for as long as it has. I'd be more embarrassed about it if I wasn't having so much fun. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and for sticking it out until the end of the video. We've got a lot more videos on the way that we're really excited to share with all of you. In the meantime though, if you want to show the channel some love, you can do the usual YouTube things. Liking, commenting, subscribing, all of it really helps us out. You can also find links to more great content and videos in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, stay tuned.